If you're finding the Relationship Alive podcast to be helpful, please consider a donation to help ensure that we can continue. To choose something that feels right for you, just visit neilsatin.com slash support or text the word support to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. And thank you so much for your help. This episode is also sponsored in part by Talkspace. You can visit Talkspace.com slash alive and use the coupon code alive to get $30 off your first month of online therapy with a licensed professional. Check it out at Talkspace.com slash alive. And it's the holiday season, and if you haven't already picked up your free copy of my top three relationship communication secrets, those things that help you stay connected no matter what you're communicating about, even if it's something really, really challenging, then pick it up. You can get it for free if you visit neilsatin.com slash relate, or you can text the word relate to the number 33444 and follow the instructions, and I will send you a link to the free guide uh, my top three relationship communication secrets. Sometimes I get this feeling inside No place I can run to No way I can fight It brings me down to my knees In the middle of the floor Leaves me not, not Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Satin. And yes, today we are here to talk about loneliness, what it's like to feel alone and our fear of being alone. It's at the core of one of our deepest fears, the thing that triggers our primal brain like nothing else, well, like a few other things. But the fear of being abandoned, which is, in a sense, this fear that you will be alone and left on your own to fend for your own survival, that runs deep. That's something that can trigger you if your partner leaves the room in a huff after an argument. It can trigger you if, you're, uh, if you get turned down when you're trying to be all lovey-dovey. Um, and... Sometimes it can trigger you if you send a text and you don't get a text back quickly enough. Um, that fear that you're being abandoned, that you're being left, that you're alone. And it makes sense that at the level of who we are as an organism, that that, that fear would be there because we rely on others for our survival. It's important. It's imperative. And, you know, I've talked on the show before about how we're, we're all connected in this web. And, and there, usually I talk about it from the perspective of something to be grateful for, the way that life shows up to support you. Um, and let's get real for a minute here. If you were truly alone in the world, you'd be in a lot of trouble. Um, unless you were trained with some like top-notch survival skills. Um, where maybe you could survive on your own for a while. But for the most part, we rely on each other. And in particular, in partnership, we're relying on our partners for love and support and encouragement and sometimes other things as well. Now, that song that you just got to hear, I wrote that actually a while ago. It's a demo I recorded. And, and I wrote it realizing just how much loneliness or my fear of being alone combined were controlling my actions, were 
determining the choices that I was making, the people that I was choosing to be with, um, the times that I chose to be with people instead of being by myself. And also, you know, I saw very clearly how this fear of being alone would come up, particularly when I was feeling rejected uh, in bed or, or even just in terms of my relationship uh, when I would show up and not be met fully. So, you know, I'm there offering myself in a way that feels very vulnerable and courageous. And, you know, if you're not received in a moment like that, it's really, really lonely. And forget about it also, if you're single, then all kinds of opportunities to feel alone, right? And yeah, sure, like we want to feel like we can be totally self-sufficient and we don't need other people. And, you know, it's great to be alone and you have so much more freedom and all those things are true. And in fact, it is true that alone you are okay. And the odds favor that even if you're really feeling alone, alone, like there's no one in your life right now, somehow that's happened to you, and yet you're here listening to this podcast, that is, unless you're choosing for it to be a permanent state, it's probably only a temporary state. What I would love for you to do is to not be ruled by your fear of being alone. And that doesn't mean that you won't have a fear of being alone. And it doesn't mean that on occasion, a fear of being abandoned won't get triggered. Like those things might just be a fact of life. I don't know. I haven't lived long enough to tell you that they're completely erasable. But I can tell you that you can get to a point where you have a lot of perspective on it, where you see that fear coming up in you and you've examined really thoroughly how it controls your actions and you regain your agency. You regain your control over your life and what you're going to do with it, where you're not dominated by this fear of being alone. So, and if, if just in case you're wondering, I'll, I'll play the rest of the song at the end of the show. In fact, I'll play the whole song so you can hear it from beginning to end at the end of the show in case you are enjoying it. And I'm also, I'm not going to make this the longest show because maybe you're really busy this time of year. I know I am. And I want this to be to the point. So, so far, the point is this. We all have it, a fear of being alone on some level and a fear of being abandoned on some level. And what that means is that on some level, your relationship with loneliness and being by yourself is affecting the choices that you make. So this is an opportunity for you to look loneliness square in the eye and to see what impact loneliness is having on you. So how can you figure that out? One way that's pretty obvious is to look at decisions that you're making in your life and to say, if I weren't afraid of being alone, would I make this same choice? And just see what asking yourself that question does. Here's another thing you could do. You could imagine what it would be like to be alone, to be left. If you're in partnership, Maybe imagine how it would feel if your partner just kind of walked in the door and said, you know what, I'm done. 
And you can maybe leave the reasons off because that's going to trigger a whole bunch of other stuff probably. But just see if you can get related to what it would feel like to have your partner just throw in the towel if you're in relationship. And if you're single, this is a great time to ask yourself, how much is my desire not to be alone fueling my pursuit of a partner? It's not bad to be influenced by not wanting to be alone. That do, do not misread me here. Uh, it makes sense that the whole point of partnership in some respects is to not be alone. Otherwise, you would just choose to be alone, right? You're choosing a partner. So this is not about judging aloneness or judging you for not wanting to be alone. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. What I want for you is for you to get really clear on your relationship to this emotion, to this feeling, to this fear. What is it in your aloneness that you savor? And what is it in your aloneness that terrifies you? Can you see decisions that you've made in the past that you made because you didn't want to be alone? Can you see times that you've made choices where you were sparing someone else from their own experience of being alone? Again, there are times, of course, we talk about support here on the show all the time and the importance of support. I'm not saying I want you to be alone. And I'm not saying I want the people close to you to be alone. But how often or have you ever spared them from that when actually them being alone might have been the best thing for them? Have you ever challenged yourself to be alone and to turn it into a positive experience in case it feels really negative to you? And how long have you done that for? And when you just imagine being alone, what kind of images come up for you? Does it fear, feel does it feel peaceful? Or does it feel scary? Does it feel expansive in your body? Or do you feel a contraction? And if so, where do you feel it? Or maybe you feel a mix of contraction and spaciousness. And where do you feel those things in your body? The degree to which you can get familiar with how your fear of being alone and your fear of being abandoned have affected you and affected your choices, the degree, that's the degree to which you will ultimately have more choice and more personal power. What I want for you in the big picture is, of course, to learn how to show up for yourself so that even if you are literally alone, you're always there with you. Some people do figure out how to abandon themselves and that can happen a lot with, um, with addictions, for instance. That's a great way to abandon yourself. But within you, and even if you are struggling with addiction, within you, there's the resourcefulness that can learn how to be there for you when you're alone so that you won't experience yourself as truly alone. And this is the blessing of believing in something greater than yourself. Not all of us do. I do. Um, because then you can also get related to the experience of how the, how the universe is showing up for you. So these are all ways of, again, um, mitigating your experience of loneliness. And on the flip side... How can you just be there? How can you just be there in the space? 
And can you feel that fear? Much like we were talking about in episode 120 with uh, Jet Psaris of Undefended Love, where we talked about what it's like to be in your fear and that so often what we're running from is just simply the experience of that fear. But if you allow yourself to sit there, you'll find that it's actually not as bad as you thought. That's where the empowerment comes from, of course. It's through facing your fears and figuring out what's real, what's true. When it comes to loneliness, there's all kinds of room for you to learn ways of being present with yourself, of validating yourself. And when it comes to partnership, learning ways to show up that aren't about just asking your partner to free you from your loneliness. Because let me tell you, you can be pretty lonely in relationship too, and maybe you've experienced that. If you come to your partner expecting them to resolve your loneliness for you, then that's maybe a recipe for getting together with someone, um, but it's not something sustainable. It's not something that is really going to last over the long haul. And then you'll both end up resenting each other, you because you're still feeling alone and your partner because you're not meeting them on equal ground. Again, there are ways that you can show up for each other, where you can show each other that you're not alone, uh, where you can do that in a way that helps bring support and new energy into your relationship. So that's, that's something we'll talk about on another show. And in fact, we've covered it quite a bit. But if that's the basis of why you're there, and if it's the fear that gets stimulated whenever your partner says no, whenever they make a boundary because they need to for whatever reason, then you're being ruled by your fear. And you got to do yourself a favor and, and uh, dive more deeply into that. If talking about loneliness and the fear of loneliness is causing some trigger for you, then what are you noticing? What are you noticing in your body is coming up? And can you breathe into that? Can you allow that feeling to be? Can you really notice what the physical, visceral experience is that just talking about being abandoned talking about being alone that that brings up for you again when you were a baby being alone meant death so it makes a good deal of sense that it would cause fear for you you may or may not eliminate the fear but you can get really related to it. You can put it into perspective and you can start to make choices that are not ruled by either avoiding being alone or somehow medicating you so that you don't experience what it's like when you're alone with yourself. It can be a glorious thing if you're willing to explore it. If you're looking for support in your life, I want to mention one more time that, of course, you can reach out to me, Neilius, N-E-I-L-I-U-S, at neilsatin.com. You can join our Facebook community on Facebook. It's called the Relationship Alive Community. And you can just search for us and join. And I'd love to see you there. We have, I think, over a thousand people there. If not over a thousand, we're getting we're getting pretty close. And that's all about supporting each other and having amazing relationships. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, the show is sponsored by Talkspace, and they have a very reasonably priced option for you to get a therapist to show up for you uh, where you can text or audio or video message with a therapist 
as often as you like, and they will get back to you at least once a day, if not more, depending on the plan you have. You can set up video chats with them too. And I've been using the service, and honestly, it's been great. Um, holidays are a stressful time, and I'm a pretty well-resourced person, and at the same time, it has been great to have that extra support from my my talk space guy um, who's there. And, uh, you know, I've been able to share some pretty intimate and personal things with him. And uh, it's kind of like having my own cheerleader in some respects. Um, I think I've mentioned before that it's also like having a journal that writes back to you with supportive feedback and, uh, and suggestions. So I recommend checking out Talkspace if you haven't yet. It's pretty reasonable, and they're offering $30 off your first month of therapy uh, if you visit Neil, Neil Satin, sorry, if you visit Talkspace.com slash alive and uh, use the coupon code alive, then you can give them a shot and get $30 off. So that's Talkspace. And I also do, on occasion, have some slots open for coaching. So if you want to work with me personally, then I, I love the work that I do with people. It's so fun, and it's also such a blessing to be able to support you personally as well as through the podcast. Um, I really just so appreciate my clients and uh, their willingness to show up and be vulnerable and to make amazing progress. So you if you're listening and where we've been working together or we have worked together this is this is for you thank you so much for for trusting me to support you all right i think that's it for today i'm really looking forward to hearing from you and uh hearing more about what you discover and if you know someone who maybe would be impacted by hearing this episode then feel free to share it with them uh, it'll be neilsatin.com slash 121 for episode 121, which is 11 squared, which is pretty special, I think. My son's turning 11 this year, so. And I'm turning 44. How did that happen? All right, I am going to take us out with the full version of the song Loneliness by yours truly. I hope you enjoy and uh, look forward to hearing from you. See you next week. And if you celebrate them, happy holidays. Take care. Sometimes I get this feeling inside. No place I can run to, no way I can fight. It brings me down to my knees in the middle of the floor. Leads me not, not, not. I must confess it was loneliness Could this be love I feel with my desire Just can't resist, I'm a moth to the fire It begins with a pleasure but it ends with a pain Coming back to this single refrain Loneliness, loneliness I must confess it was loneliness Can I stay? Like an ending before it
it's begun Loneliness Loneliness I must confess it was loneliness 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 I must 